Är det möjligt som mor att förlåta sitt barn som har mördat sina syskon? Och går det att känna värme för sin son som under flera år torterat och dödat? Och vad händer med ett barn som tvingas växa upp som soldat och tränas i grymheter som det knappt går att sätta ord på? Går att läka dessa djupa sår som en hel nation bär på? Vi reste till Liberia där tiotusentals barn har använts som vapen i det 14 år långa inbördeskriget. Berövade på kärlek, drömmar och fråntagna hela sin barndom. Det här är en berättelse om försoning. Något av det svåraste men också det viktigaste som finns. Rufus var bara sex år när han kidnappades och tvingades bli barnsoldat. Totalt utlämnad, långt ifrån sin mamma, levde den lille pojken tillsammans med andra barn och lärde sig skjuta med maskingivär, tortera och döda. Det här är Rita. Hon var också barnsoldat. Hennes far och bror mördades framför hennes ögon innan hon kidnappades av grillan. Rita var bara 13 år gammal när hon födde sin första son ensam i djungeln. This is not like uh, the rich, spoiled kids in uh, other parts of the world that freak out if they don't get their candy bar. These kids don't like candy bar. They eat pepper, hot pepper. Charles Taylor var hjärnan bakom den ofattbart grymma krigstaktiken som gick ut på att tillfånga ta barn, tvinga dem att hugga armar och ben av sina föräldrar och syskon eller till och med döda familjemedlemmar. Sen tvingades barnen ta narkotika för att bli känslolösa mördarmaskiner och blev totalt beroende av grillan. I byarna var de hatade och fruktade och ingen ville ha dem tillbaka. Spåren efter det 14 år långa inbördeskriget syns överallt där unga människor går runt med avhuggna armar och med benstumpar. Liberia ligger i Västafrika och är bara en fjärdedel av Sveriges yta. Det är ett land rikt på naturtillgångar, bland annat världsberömda återvärda diamanter. Men förvånande nog är Liberia trots detta ett av världens fattigaste länder. I Liberias huvudstad Monrovia arbetar några eldsjälar för att ta hand om krigsskadade före detta barnsoldater. Hjälpbehovet är enormt. Men 150 barn har turen att bli utvalda för att under ett år vara här på Röda Korsets Car Center där de lär sig läsa, skriva och lär sig ett yrke. Men kanske viktigast av allt så lär de sig också genom dagliga terapisamtal att våga lita på andra människor igen. Läkningen är ett mödosamt arbete som går ut på att resa tillbaka i tiden och sätta ord på de fasansfulla upplevelserna. Röda Korsets personal pekar på Rufus och berättar om hans svåra krigsupplevelser. Rufus går med på att träffa mig, men hans ansikte är slutet och han undviker envist min blick. Då skulle du se hur han var när han kom hit för sex månader sen, säger Ernest, en av dem som vunnit Rufus förtroende. Rufus ser ut som ett osäkert barn, men ärren på kroppen efter skotthål och knivhugg avslöjar något helt annat. Det är 
Rita är rehabiliteringscentrets stolthet. Hennes förvandling är det närmaste total. För ett år sedan kom hon hit som en otillgänglig och hård ung kvinna. Men bara efter en kort tid märktes Ritas begåvning och hennes hunger efter kunskap. En dag när läraren var sjuk klev Rita fram och tog över undervisningen i klassen. Idag är det en leende ung kvinna som har stora drömmar om att få studera och skaffa sitt yrke. Men precis som alla andra i hennes ålder bär hon på smärtsamma minnen. If you don't be soldier, they will shoot you. See. So I decided to just decide to stay my sister and I. In my first but my sister was a little bit big, she was about 15 at that time. So they ripped her in my person. Något av det viktigaste som finns är att återknyta kontakten med föräldrarna. För många barn är det omöjligt eftersom föräldrarna dog i kriget. För andra är det omöjligt för att byn vägrar att ta emot en mördare. Det är därför föreståndaren Jimmy och hans personal förbereder mötet mellan barnen och mammorna mycket noga. The whole philosophy behind at the car children is to help get war affected children off the streets and into the communities and help to help them to regain their level of sanity within the community and more than as value and reintegrate them with the family where they can participate both educationally and developmentally with the progress of the communities. Idag är det en mycket speciell dag för Rufus. Det är nämligen idag han ska resa för att träffa sin mor för första gången sedan han var liten. Och samtidigt ska han också besöka platser från det förflutna. Vi har fått lov att följa med på den historiska och riskfyllda resan. Rufus vet att byborna inte vill ha med honom att göra. Men frågan är om hans mor kommer att ta emot honom. Framför oss har vi en flera dagar lång resa från Morovia österut in i landet där grillan hade sitt huvudfäste. Vi reser i två av Röda Korsets jipar och vi står i ständig kontakt med Röda Korsets högkvarter i Liberia av säkerhetsskäl. Resan är mycket riskabel eftersom det fortfarande finns många laglösa, desperata, tungt beväpnade före detta gerillasoldater gömda i djungeln. Med på resan finns också Jimmy och Ernest från Karcentret för att stötta Rufus. På vägen till den före detta diktatorn Charles Taylors träningsläger stannar vi i Banga där flera andra barnsoldater vittnar om sina krigsupplevelser. So, myself, I know you have give me an. It should matter if I say. So, we all join a full side fighting. That was what my parents. Jag tittar på Rufus och funderar över vad det här väcker för minnen. What were you doing? Were you killing people? I think I might be like you. I don't check it because they they group too much. People are so fighting. You don't. You know. fighting? Check for when you kill. Check for when you kill. So. So were were they beating you during the war? No, they don't beat me, but they suffer me. Because I was not someone to do that. Mm. And you were missing your mommy? Yes. Mm. Did you see a lot of terrible things? Hmm? Did you see terrible things happening? Yes. Mm. <coughs> What did you see? I see that they will go somewhere, they take up people to kill them. You saw that? Yes. They kill people? Mm. You were a soldier? During the war, me and my mom were going. The people in the camp, between all the grandma and pa, they came and pa, they had no problem with my mom. During the war, the people came to catch me. They killed some of my people. They killed your people? Yes. Your parents? Yes. Did you see that? Oh, no. I didn't see my mother. Uh-huh, your mother? Well, my father, my sister, brothers, all of them, they had died. All dead? Yes. Mm. Besides? Me and my mother. I get hit in the war too bad. 
Le pauvre problème est venu à ma chose. Et il n'est pas. Il n'est tellement focus. So that's why you lost your voice? Yes. Oh, I see. I left in hospital. All the poor days I met in and went on. Look at this. He had killed my father even me. In front of you? Yes. My mm. brother came even me. Yes. So it's hard to live with those memories? Yes. Mm. As for ever. There are no way, so I will not go in now. You hope that there will be some? Yes. Mm. You wanted to bury him? Yes. Well, mm. my friends say no. Your friends say no. You were afraid that you they would kill you? Yeah. Utanför Monrovia i byn Chocolate City har Rita hittat ett rum för sig och sin yngste son Morris. Ingen i byn vet vad Rita har varit med om under kriget. Hon har ett varmt och behagligt sätt och förmodligen har det här också varit hennes överlevnadsstrategi. If you don't fight for yourself, you will die and kill you. So you just have to fight for yourself. Pick up your own gun and then find where to run. So I just want to go to the world. Running up and down, up and down, up and down. The life was so bad because it has anything for somebody to say. See what you do, it don't satisfy you with me. So it was forced. Did it too. It was forced, you see. So we just, we were, we just forced to do it. We were not good. Did you have a weapon? Weapon? You have a gun? I will have you a gun. My boyfriend had two. He gave me one. Yes. People being killed. My, if my boyfriend killed, he must be bringing a hat. He must hat to cook it for him. And I was forced to do it. I think. Cook it for him. Yes. If I don't do it, he will kill me. If I try to escape, he can stay home for me and kill me. You see. And then you got pregnant. Mm -hmm. I got pregnant for my first time. Your first boy, mm -hmm. your first son, and you were like 13 years old or? I was 13 years old when I got pregnant. I don't know anything about baby. And then you got pregnant again with a little Morris. Yes. <laughs> He's only two years old. Where is the father? He left me a long time. He left you a long time. Mm -hmm. Did you kill somebody during the war? If the shooting I was shooting, it killed somebody. I don't know. So you were shooting and you don't know if you killed somebody. But you were shooting at I people. was shooting. He said shoot. I wanted to know when enemy come and attack or if I was shooting. Go in the bush, in Harley, with an Osa. So if I kill anybody, I don't know. Vi närmar oss Charles Taylors träningsläger och det märks på Rufus att minnen väcks till liv. Under kriget var det här basen för Charles Taylors fruktade mördarförband Anti-Terrorist Unit, ATU, som torterade, våldtog och dödade män, kvinnor och barn. Och det var hit Rufus och andra kidnappade barn fördes för att tränas till mördarsoldater. Det är första gången som Rufus ser tillbaka sedan kriget. En smärtsam men nödvändig del i försoningsprocessen. So, here we are, huh? Yes. How do you feel being back here? I feel bad. You feel bad? Yes. Mm. Why? Can you tell me why? Yeah. It can get my heart wet, yeah. For all the things I do. So you were training up here? Yes, I, I, I take my training here. You were training here? Yes. What did you do here? I take training, I jog. Yeah, I... You jogged? Yes, yeah, I go on my ankle pee. Can yeah. you show me? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. And that was training? Yes. 
and at where we are say for people come and kick me and my whole working not number I have not no say I believe on that I got here so they beat you to get strong to become strong yes were you a strong guy yeah I, I still school Nana you still strong a strong guy and did Charles Taylor came here yes he came here one time Wait, what happened he came here, he brought food for us. He brought food for you? Yes, mm -hmm. for us. Do you remember him? Yes. Tell me about Charles Taylor. The man, he is good man to us. He was good to you? Yes, yeah, special with the fighter. Special with the fighters, and you were a fighter? Yes. Okay. So this was the headquarter? Yes. Yeah. One time I said, one of our men said, he went to Pacho. So people then grabbing and then beat him. Mm -hmm. So they they were calling and then grabbing, and then beat him. They beat him. Yes. Your friend. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here is the house. Yes. Mm. How many boys here? Six. Six. Six boys here. Yeah. Where were you sleeping? Who me? Where? I used to sit on the left. Here. What's up? And your friend, he was sleeping here too? Yes. Mm. Because I have carpet to go back in town and I was trying to, to take the boot road to go. But I take the boot road now and some people spot me and they can't run more. So they said people need to grab me. And they were beating you when they took you? Yes. Yeah. You were trying to swim over the river? Yes. Yeah. And you couldn't swim? Yes. Mm. Were you crying sometimes? Me? Yeah. I feel bad. You feel bad? Yes. You wanted to go away? Yes, to go back to my mom. Yeah, to your mom. Mm -hmm. You missed your mom when yes. you were here. When you, had, when you smoked grass, when you had pills, drugs, were you feeling better? Yeah. You feel better? You could forget? Mm-hmm. I can I, I can tell you that people say, yeah, yeah, say, last day I say, the day I take in church, yeah, I see people like dogs. Like dogs? Yeah. Omgivningen är skrämmande och döden känns hela tiden närvarande. Rufus har en sak som han vill berätta. Historien yeah. om dödsläken. The death game we play we advance the arm. So we play death game. So one person we will we will will did it. So one person you me my friend we cross. So I cross, yeah, I cross again, yeah. My friend come cross my yard le concha get me. Yeah, I got that Yeah, I come to report and yeah, let me see. If I can't report, he will shoot me. You wanted to bury him? Yes, well, my friend said no. Your friend said no, you were afraid that you they would kill you? Yeah. Mm. He said, if I touch him, yeah, he will shoot me too. He will shoot you too? Yes. This explains how they behave, you know, how they behave rough, how they behave um, to one another, to our friends around them, even any uh, people who they consider enemies, like you heard, um, even when they're taking the drugs, they look at other people as animals or dogs. So no wonder why they, they mistreated people, no wonder why. Rita har klätt sig fin för att möta sin mamma. Hon ringer mamma och berättar att hon är på väg. Rita har nyligen försonats med sin mor. Men under alla år när Rita var ute i djungeln och krigade så hade hennes mor ingen aning om var hennes dotter fanns. Eller om hon var vid liv. Det var tack vare Röda Korsets personal som Ritas mor hittade sin dotter. 
Det är andra gången som Brita hennes mor träffas sedan kriget. Och det märks att dottern är efterlängtad. Jag ses mamma då. Hallå. Jag ses mamma. Jag ses mamma då. Jag har nu. Hallå, vi får det. När jag frågar om vad som egentligen hände på den här platsen för tio år sedan väcks plötsligt Ritas minnen till liv och hon vill berätta. This is the same pharaoh man we have here, I can see. So your father was on the ground? Yes, sitting on the ground. They tie him up. They sit on the ground, they tie him up. Pull the ankle together and then squeeze it up. Show the chest. Then, then beat him out. Some, they have some men inside, you know, cut out their ear, ear, even the nose, take out the eyes. And I was here in person when they were doing it. So all that come in my mind and make me sad sometimes. So we fight by all me to escape. No way. We see. So we just decide to be with them. And we can fight for ourselves, fight for our life, until we can be. Tell me about your bro little brother. My little brother. We were on our way, you no know, running, to at least leave them and go on our own. But my little brother was running along with me with my sister when they shot him on his side. Yes. Yes, they shot him. So he all oh, is testing. It came down. So there were no way to find cloth to shop it back and tie it up, carry it to the hospital. There were no way, it was too late. The bullet cut, cut, cut it. So it was too late for us. It was a fine little boy and smart, clever. But the killed him, he hurt me. Yes. In your present? In my present. So we fought to pick up the intestine and then pull it back to tie it up. There was no way. He couldn't make it. He died. They kill people, so many people. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. This road. All the way down, they have horses and they kill, kill, kill. But they, you can see the place is full. People don't care to clean the place because they, they kill so a lot of people now. We can see the boom of some human being. So some people just pick up some and bury them here. Yeah. So some people so, are buried in Yes, yeah, some people boom were buried. We don't know who all were dead. Only the boom we met. So people my, know neighbors and neighbors. Some people cry for their parents because they didn't see them. And we met so many body here. Then boom. Some people may see the race boom, the score, everything has gone away. Only the boom we can see. The scorpion, we see. Lots of people buried. Yes, lots of people buried here. So we decided to run. While we are running, the fellows are dropping behind us. They are dying, dying, dying. So. We just have to fight for our life. You can see that there where I lost my mother. I left from her and I went on my own, my sister and I, with my little brother, they shoot. There where I left her. Because everybody was running for survival. When we ran there, then we go we meet the group of soldiers. There again, there where they raped my sister. And then kidnap her. So that so happened we, down here? Yeah, in the bush. Mm -hmm. They were they kidnapped my sister. And what happened to you? You were standing there watching when they raped your sister? Yes, I was standing in my prison. I can't talk. If I cry, they will shoot me. They say, Even when they are killing, if from you, they say, if you cry, they will kill you. So if they're trying to kill somebody, just stand and look there. You stand sad again, it's a problem. You try to cry, it's a problem. So you can't laugh. What you did can't you do? Cry. You can't stand sad. 
So you just have to be, you know, at a little bit in serious little bit just in the middle. They are happy. Rufus fortsätter sin resa för att träffa sin mor. På vägen från träningslägret pekar han plötsligt ut genom bilfönstret och säger Det var där jag matade lejonet. Och så berättar han om hur Charles Taylor valde ut honom, bara nio år gammal, att gå in i lejonburen. Det är ett exempel på Charles Taylors nyckfulla galenskap. Han hade krokodiler, lejon, kondorer och andra vilda djur i burar på sin farm. Vi stannar vid farmen för att vandra med Rufus in i hans förflutna. So Rufus, this is the cave. Yes, like it. Yes. This is the cage where you feed the lion. Yes. Can you show me how you did? Yes. The first day I came, yeah, I stayed where yeah, yeah, I was afraid to come inside. Yeah, the, my problem is like, don't be scary. So I come inside, I, yeah, I gave it to it. I, yeah, I took it where yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I did it, yeah, it finished. A ear could not, yeah, a cover. A dead chicken, yeah, a cover, nah. yeah, a can, yeah. That I'm so new, yeah, a close, yeah, yeah, as I stay on here for long, yeah, a cover, yeah, after a cover, nah. yeah, the nails, then, nah. yeah, I, yeah, I used to bring for food and the air. I was not scared, now. So I don't want. I get the food of air, they eat, yeah, I, I go back. Yeah, I clean up your soul. I, I clean up your soul. Yeah, it, it come, it eat, yeah, and to nothing to me. So after they eat now, yeah, I start scratching your head. Yeah, the next day, chat it up now. Yeah. You can't make me sing that up here, up there, yeah. You ask, like who you to get the line of food? Yeah, they say, like me. You give me money, that is, you. How much? You give me 150 US. And you were happy? Yes. He gave me did, a... Did you keep the money? Me? No, my command brought a ticket for me. What did you feel then? Yeah, I'll, I'll feed the bar. Yeah, yeah, I'll go now. Yeah, I'll go now. The war sees now. The war sees now. Yeah, before I go, my will feel. Det har varit en lång väg av oro, missförstånd, misstänksamhet och till och med hat innan försoningen mellan mor och dotter kunde äga rum. Det här är bara ett exempel på hur Röda Korsets personal jobbar med försoning. Could you tell me how it was to see your mother? I'm so happy to see you because for long time. Yeah. <laughs> And then they see you also. If for me seeing you today is an honor for me to have you. <laughs> What did you feel when you saw Rita? I feel happy. <laughs> I feel happy about her. She told me she was looking for you in the bush. Yes. She didn't know what you and she was very angry. Can you tell her what you said to me? Uh, yes, I can tell you. Um, well, tell Rita. I, I told them that when I was looking for you, I want I heard about you that you were in your friend away you were in Monrovia. So I went to look for you. I found a friend of your friend. Then I told I, she told me say, but Rita, who you looking for? I saw her. Oh, she told Red Cross. I said, oh, but how Rita can be the Red Cross? She can't tell me. So I was too fast. So I I went. 
to look for you. I want, I, I want to find you in red class. Then they put our there, the teachers then, they talk with me. Mm -hmm. So as myself, I, I forget everything. I forgive, I, I forgive you. I told them, say, but then I don't say again. I'm not angry again. Since I see her, where since you're talking to her, I'm happy. So when I want to marry you, I was so happy, and I want to marry you in good condition. So all the angry, even it was, I was just drinking something like that. So, <laughs> but when I see you, I was very happy. So I left. The next day again, I went by. I tell the teachers there, I say, but then, say you're doing like that, thank you. Well, you're going to try by all me and educate my daughter so she can be with you now and be happy her too. So she can try and do her own life. So that's the thing, why we talk there that day. Then you were there that very day. Yes. <laughs> what do you feel when she's telling you that? Yeah, I, feel, I feel happy because she said that she has forgiven me because I, I, did, I make her to be angry, you know. Mm. So now she has come out to say she forgave me. I feel happy. And you missed your mother really in her. the in the I bush. Ah, uh, yeah. Many, many years. You were such a little girl. Mm. You didn't know she was looking for you? I didn't know. <laughs> yes. I was not she was looking for me up and down and I only when she went to Carsington now telling the story how she was looking for me so I get to apologize to her to forgive me. Yes. Vi har åkt i flera timmar på ensliga, leriga vägar djupt in i djungeln. Nu är vi inte längre skyddade av FN-styrkor. Då händer det. Det som inte får hända. Strax innan vi är framme i byn fastnar den tunga jipen mellan stockarna på den provisoriska bron. Rufo ställnar till och tittar bort mot andra sidan bron. Jag ser en ung kvinna med ett barn på ryggen komma vandrande. När jag ser på Rufus, då förstår jag vem det är. Det är Rufus mor. För första gången sedan Rufus var en liten pojke så vandrar han återigen vid sin mors sida. Det här är ett stort dramatiskt ögonblick för de båda. Rufus är inte accepterad av byn. Han har ju varit en av Charles Taylors soldater. Men hans mor har valt sida. Lugnt går hon nu bredvid sin son och möter trots sitt byns blickar. Det är ingen enkel sak att förklara varför byn ska ta emot Rufus, en mördare. Jimmy samlar hela befolkningen och håller ett brandtal där han förklarar att Rufus... Precis som så många andra bara var ett litet barn när han kidnappades. But the war is over. Should we continue to be that way? No. That's what I'm saying. You had difficulties to forgive your son. It was hard for you to forgive your son. Yeah, the time I hear you are very but also I bring him in. So what do you feel now when you have Rufus back? I feel happy. For happy? Mm. Do you, did you recognize him? Yeah. You recognize him? Because you haven't seen him since he was a very small boy. Mm. So now you have forgiven him? Yeah. Mm. Rufus? Yes. Rufus, Rufus. What do you what do you feel when you see your mother? You feel fine? Yes. You feel happy? Yes. You missed your mother? Yes. Mm. Is it good to hear that she has forgiven you? Yes. Mm. Mm. 
Can you tell your mother a story when you were feeding the lion? What do you think when you hear that story? Can you tell your mother what you would like to become when you graduate? What will you do in the future? Tell your mother. If I guy it, I'll be traffic. Rufus ler oftare än jag har sett honom göra tidigare. Då kommer Jimmy att dra mig åt sidan. Fort, det är bråttom. Byborna har blivit aggressiva och upphetsade. Nu kan vad som helst hända, säger Jimmy och ser orolig ut. Snabbt kastar vi oss in i jiparna medan upprättade bybor omringar oss. Vi vet inte vad som har utlöst deras ilska. Men en sak vet vi. Vi är helt oskyddade. Här finns varken polis eller FNs styrkor om något skulle hända. Nu gäller det bara att bron håller. Landsbygden i Liberias inland är grönskande och bedövande vacker. Både klimatet och den bördiga jorden visar vilken potential det här landet har. Men under vår resa slår också det andra Liberia mot oss. 85 procent av befolkningen är arbetslös. Vilket är den högsta siffran i världen. Nästan hälften av befolkningen är under 14 år och medelåldern är bara 18 år. Den förra demokratin vilar helt i händerna på FNs fredsbevarande styrkor. Den som har fått det oerhört svåra uppdraget att leda och hela Liberia är en kvinna. I december 2005 valdes Ellen Johnson Sirleaf till president. Afrikas första kvinnliga president. Jag fick en intervju med denna mäktiga kvinna och jag frågade vad händer när FN drar tillbaka sina fredstyrkor? Well, let's say first of all that we hope that the UN will meet its commitment to stay in the country until such time that our own security forces including the new army have been properly trained and professionalized. Um, we hope at that time too, the government would have made much more progress in terms of responding to people's needs for jobs, for education, for infrastructure improvement. Um, so if we can just buy that much time to get some of these progress underway, then we, sh we think that uh, stability uh, could be assured. Charles Taylor, en av världens grymmaste och mest fruktade ledare. Han störtades från presidentposten i Liberia 2003 men lyckades fly till Nigeria. Efter påtryckningar från det internationella samfundet lämnades han över till FN. Han ska nu ställas inför rätta den 4 juni inför den internationella krigstribunalen i Haag. Anklagad för brott mot mänskligheten som han begått i grannlandet Sierra Leone. Men ännu har Charles Taylor inte ställts till svar för sina brott i hemlandet Liberia. Är detta en allt för känslig fråga? No, our country wants to want to move forward out of the shadows of the past, including Mr. Taylor. And so at this stage. It's an issue for the international community, and that's the way we've left it. 
I know that you are beginning the very um, hard work of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, that these young people should give their testimonies. How do you enforce them to, to testimony? I think that one would be just reassuring them that this process is not a process that leads to punishment, that this is a process of confession and forgiveness. Uh, this is a process that's meant to be one of reintegrating, reconciling, and all within the society in recognition of the fact that, you know, if we were to go the judicial route, we'd be talking about hundreds of thousands of young people, many of them who committed crimes and atrocities over which they had no control of themselves. Um, so we must just keep convincing them that this is the way to go. But we have to go this way because you can't just leave it. You can't leave those who have been aggrieved and affected with no recourse. And a recourse is to give them an opportunity to face their accuser and to forgive them. You are um, a grandmother, a mother and a grandmother. How do you feel when you meet all these uh, young people? I mean, if you talk to a few of them and they tell you their individual stories, you have to feel saddened that um, our country, our situation, um, got into a situation where young people had to go through uh, what they went through just for survival and what they were subjected to and how this has affected their normal growth and their normal you know, evolution into society. So uh, it is sad, but fortunately, we have an opportunity to try to correct the mistakes of the past, to try to set the country back on course, to try once again to give these young people a stake in the future. Röda Korsets rehabiliteringscenter drivs av eldsjälar som gör underverk med dessa krigsskadade och svårt traumatiserade barn. En av de tyngsta uppgifterna är att välja ut 150 barn bland tiotusentals sökande som får en möjlighet att både utbilda sig och gå i terapi för att kunna läka sina sår. Den engagerade personalen med grundaren Jimmy, Ernest och Maddie i spetsen jobbar dygnet runt och de finns alltid till hands när barnen behöver stöd och hjälp. Och behovet är enormt. Snart står ett nytt center klart för inflyttning. Barnen kommer att få bättre plats att både leka och utbilda sig. We have four areas and that is Monrovia, Banga in the in the central, you have Lufa or Bonjuma in the northwest and then you have the southeast. Our dream, our desire is probably in the next two, three years to have each of these areas at least with a center. These are areas where there's a concentration of children fighters who have no one to help them. Men Jimmy och hans kollegor har en ännu större dröm. En dröm om att få bygga fler center i andra delar av Liberia dit hjälp aldrig når fram. Där i djungeln driver vilsna barn och ungdomar omkring fyllda av hat, rädsla och sorg. Att kunna ge några av dessa barn samma chans till läkning som Rita och Rufus det skulle vara att ge Liberia en framtid. I am willing and I want to challenge to become a title. Mm. <laughs> If I got it, I'll be happy. om den här dokumentären och hur du kan bidra till att hjälpa de här krigsdrabbade barnen på tv4.se.